We're getting close to the end of the tier list, climbing up the mountain towards the peak of character strength. But first, we have to stop at a nice little plateau near the top and take a look at the high tiers. Ultimate is a unique game in that a lot of characters are at least decent, and even more characters are actually pretty strong. And if you want to get pretty strong with your main, you should go to ProGuides.com and check out some of our character guides, coaches, and courses with pros. We'll help you out no matter what tier your character's in. In the high tier zone, we're starting to talk about characters that have enough strength and potential that you could solo main them. They have very few matchups that are so hard that you need a secondary. They also have enough depth and versatility that you can play them in a few different styles and spend a lot of time developing mastery of them. High tiers aren't the best the game has to offer though, and many of them have a key weakness or two that keeps them from reaching the pinnacle of character strength. A lot of these weaknesses won't be big enough for characters in mid-tier to consistently exploit, but they will be big enough to make the high tier vulnerable to top tiers. Other characters may have the strength to be in top tier, they just don't have the results yet. And that leads us perfectly into our first high tier on the list, Shulk. Shulk is potential incarnate, and he's honestly showing that potential more and more each tournament. Shulk has Ike-like hitboxes combined with a unique mechanic that completely changes his base stats and game plan. Shulk's Minato Arts let him access brand new combos and give him one of the most dynamic neutral games in Ultimate. His Smash Art gives him absurd ledge trapping and kill power. His Speed Art makes him a combo machine that can't be pinned down. His Shield Art lets him stay alive and escape combos. His Jump Art can let him avoid enemies, recover from really low, and make crazy efficient edge guards. And that's not even talking about Buster, his most high-risk, high-reward art. Shulk mains have to learn all of these and learn dial storage on top of that. Plus, they've got lots of combos and spacings to practice as well. Like Ike, Shulk's huge hitboxes are balanced out by lag, and if an opponent breaks through his wall of disjoints, they can make Shulk look like an underleveled RPG character. However, learning dial storage, shield arts combo breakers, and spacing lets Shulk counter the enemy's advantage and sometimes turn the momentum. Shulk stays in high tier right now because he still struggles with some of the top tiers. But with the way Nico and Tomei are playing, that may change soon. While we're talking about potential, let's also talk a bit about Wolf. Wolf has had a really weird trajectory in Ultimate's meta. He started out incredibly hyped up, top 5 character levels of hyped up. Pretty much every top competitor picked up Wolf because he was so solid all around. Then, bit by bit, the top competitors stopped using him. Wolf lost a lot of his prominent mains like Zachary, Tweak, and MKLeo. At that point, he seemed overrated. While he wasn't weak in any one area, he also didn't seem to have the strengths that top tiers had. So we dropped him to high tier. However, now that truly dedicated Wolf mains have had time with the character, he's starting to look even better. He's also starting to look like he has a lot more depth than what we first figured. Players like K9, Larry Lur, Orion, and Charlie the King are showing what this character can do. While none of these players made top 50 in this PGRU season, there's a strong chance at least one of them makes it next season. In terms of actual strengths, Wolf's got a lot. He's a weird fusion of Sortie and Space Animal, so he's got great air movement and combo power, and he's got great hitboxes and neutral tools. His tech chase game is incredibly potent too, and one read can lead to a stock. His disadvantage can be tricky because of his weight, fall speed, and recovery. But his neutral air is a great defensive tool, so his defense is still better than most. Wolf dropped to high tier for now, but don't be surprised if this renegade flies back up to S tier. Okay, now here's a character who came up the list and made it into our high tier, Young Link. Like Wolf, Young Link also had a hot start in Ultimate, only to cool off once he got dropped by Tweak. Honestly, we could talk a lot about Tweak's character changes and the way they shaped the upper tiers. Young Link had two big problems, he was lightweight and he couldn't kill. These two are a pretty bad combination as Young Link's opponent can get rage and steal the lead out from under him. However, Nintendo recently buffed Young Link by making his Zare a lot stronger which gave him new kill confirms. Plus, they made up air and up smash kill earlier. On top of that, Young Link mains like Toast were already working out new ways to get kills at lower percentages. Add those meta changes to Young Link's established strengths like damage output, small hurtbox, great movement, great projectiles, and disjoints, and you get a high tier. In time, you might even get a top tier. But we don't want to jump the gun. We want to wait and see what this new buffed Young Link can do first. We've got another figure from the old days of gaming coming into high tier. We're talking about Game & Watch, one of Ultimate's weirdest fighters. 
Game & Watch took a little while to get into high tier because his kit was so weird that we didn't understand its strength right away. Honestly, a lot of pros didn't either. However, Meister has shown what this character can do, and pros like Zachary have shown they can do it too. If you ask people what makes Mr. Game & Watch so good, you'll hear the words up B out of shield more than anything else. But you need more than just that to be high tier. And Mr. Game & Watch has a lot more than that. He's got insane combos and damage. He's got insane raw kill potential from Judge, back air, down air, and his tilts. He's got a hellish advantage state from his forward air and up air. And he's got some of the best out of shield options, recovery tools, and landing options in the whole game. So why isn't he top tier? Well, he could be, but it could be the case that players haven't adapted to him yet. MKLeo has said some of the 2D grandpa's strength comes from competitors not knowing the matchup. Given how unique and weird his neutral is, matchup knowledge could mean a lot and could keep Game & Watch from top tier. Plus, Game & Watch is also the third lightest character in the game. So even though he has lots of ways to stay safe, he dies really quickly if he's not careful. He also struggles against a lot of really popular top-tier characters like Lucina, Palutena, and ZSS. So we're keeping the godfather of handheld gaming in high tier for now. There's a high tier that's even lighter than Game & Watch. It's Pichu, the baby rat. Pichu is the lightest character in the game by a pretty wide margin, and it's a big part of what keeps him out of top tier, despite having crazy damage, edge guarding, speed, and being super hard to hit. Pichu's self-damage and kill power nerfs from earlier patches also made him much easier to camp out. While we still see players like Black Twins, Neotono, and Arfang do well with him, this little dude is nowhere near the feared character he was. Now, he's pretty solidly high tier. He can invalidate some mid-tiers and has an incredible offense, but he just dies too early and does too much damage to himself to be top tier. Olimar has a lot of similarities to Pichu. He has an incredible advantage state and damage output. He's super small and hard to hit, but he also dies super early and doesn't do well on the back foot. And he got nerfed just as hard as Pichu in patch 3.1. The nerfs dropped Olimar from high tier and he hasn't risen back up since. He's still good enough for Debuzz, Shutone, and Myron, but not good enough that Debuzz and Shutone felt they could rely on him alone. Both players have picked up secondaries to cover some matchups. Olimar could improve after patch 7.0 fixed his broken shield, helping him deal with ledge pressure. However, Olimar still struggles from having a kind of linear game plan that relies on zoning the opponent until they make a bad move. He's still got one of the best advantage states of any character, but his bad disadvantage might keep him in high tier. Greninja is a bit like a rushdown Olimar. Not in the sense that they play the same, but that they share some strengths and weaknesses. In advantage, Greninja is dashing around, low profiling, making himself hard to hit and peppering opponents with quick moves that are hard to deal with. When he's in disadvantage, he's scrambling to find a way out of shield and the right move to protect himself. Greninja has a super cool combo game, really reliable kill confirms, and a good pattern for offense. But he also has maybe the worst out of shield game of all the high tiers. He can use his speed and low-profile dash to mitigate this weakness. Still, top-tier characters and competitors will abuse him for it. Greninja feels like a pretty obvious high tier. Players like Leia and Venia get good results with him, but nothing too crazy. He has advantages that clearly outweigh his disadvantages. But his disadvantages are large enough that we see him get bullied for them a lot. The same can be said for Ultimate's two hypest sorties, Roy and Krom. Or, Croy if you're looking for another awful Smash portmanteau. Roy and Krom have really defined strengths and weaknesses. Overall, the strengths outweigh the weaknesses, but the weaknesses are large enough to hold both characters back. Roy and Krom both have a lot of kill power, damage, and speed. When they get in on opponents, they can score early kills and combos. And it's pretty easy for them to get in on their opponents too. They've also got great tools for juggling, tech chasing, ledge trapping, and even edge guarding, so their offense is basically S tier. Their defense is pretty good too. They both have good out of shield options and they have nice air movement that saves their recoveries from being outright bad. Their disjoints and speed help them stay mobile and elusive and neutral too. Krom's main issue is that he can be gimped, so he has to be more careful with his jumps and low recoveries. Roy has a slightly better but still abusable recovery and slightly less reliable kill confirms than Krom. Roy basically has higher peaks than Krom because his sweet spot can kill crazy early, but Krom is more consistent. Between the two, Roy is probably more likely to get optimized into top tier. His sour and sweet spots open up new combos and kill confirms that could make his strengths overwhelm his weaknesses. 
For now, both characters stay in high tier because other rushdown characters have their strengths and don't have the weaknesses. Mario wishes he had the kill power Roy and Krom have. If he did, he'd be top tier. Mario has pretty much everything but kill power, and that makes him a winning character to Dark Wizzy. Unfortunately, Mario's lack of kill power has even lost Dark Wizzy sets. However, outside of kill power, Mario doesn't struggle with much else but a slightly gimpable recovery and a lack of disjoints. Otherwise, Mario has a great neutral game. He has insane combos that can net super early kills if you're not careful. He has really good out-of-shield options. He has a lot of fast and effective moves and a pretty good grab, and he forces opponents to think about a lot of different things. Can my recovery be caped? Am I in a position where he can get a huge platform combo on me? What stage is this character even bad on? Mario's just a super solid character all around and definitely solo main viable. He could even become top tier if Dark Wizzy keeps tearing up the competition, if another Mario main starts performing, or if Zachary plays the character more often. Nintendo's other classic character, Rob, doesn't have trouble taking stocks. Rob has a lot of hard-hitting moves and is another great all-arounder. His well-balanced skill set has made him one of the more popular and more hated characters in Ultimate. But regardless of how many times you've been bodied by the robotic operating buddy, he's got his weaknesses. Mainly, Rob is a huge bodied heavy that's easy to combo and kill confirm. Rob's disadvantage state can be kind of tricky. He's got lots of ways to delay landing and mess up timings, but he's pretty susceptible to hard reads. His nair can be pretty vulnerable to a parry and retaliation too. Rob's strengths greatly outweigh his weaknesses, though. This cold-blooded machine can box up close, zone, edge guard, ledge trap, combo, and plenty more. He's got some weirdly bad moves in part of his kit, like some of his grabs, but he's got so many other good parts of his kit that he can really confuse and take advantage of opponents. Unless he gets nerfed, Rob isn't going out of style in Ultimate. Mega Man might be the only character you could say is kind of similar to Rob. Like Rob, Mega Man is great at zoning, but he can also scrap up close. Mega Man also suffers from similar weaknesses. Though Mega Man doesn't look like it, he's pretty darn heavy, and that makes him combo food. I mean, his Japanese name is Rockman, after all. Mega Man makes up for a kind of rough disadvantage with great aerials, zoning tools, and kill confirms. His Metal Blade into Up Tilt Kill Confirm is one of the more underrated options in Ultimate, and his mains have been using it to get some great results too. Yeti, Scat, and Kameme have all done well in Ultimate. While Mega Man is really strong, a lot of the rushdown top tiers give him trouble and hold him in high tier. He can have issues with Pikachu, ZSS, and sometimes Peach because of his weight class. Mega Man might need to fight another boss and get another upgrade before he reaches top tier. And finally, we have a character that you can't really compare to anything, Pac-Man. Pac-Man plays his own game, a game that relies on relentless zoning and what feels like a non-existent disadvantage state. Between a great neutral air out of shield, a fire hydrant that almost completely covers his landing, and items that will absolutely destroy you if you whiff against him, Pac-Man is harder to approach than your crush on Valentine's Day. Pac-Man's only weakness is that he can struggle to approach too, and he plays a lot better with a lead than without it. Pac-Man takes a lot of patience to play properly. So much patience that you basically need to be willing to go to a timeout. Since his playstyle can be linear, the more flexible top tier characters can adapt and play around him by either camping him out or learning and exploiting his defensive tools. Which is easier said than done! That's it for the high tiers. These are the characters that can carry you through a bracket all by themselves, but could also fall out early if they run into some bad matchups. They're generally good, but get weaker against experienced foes who have practiced exploiting their flaws. If you want to see our top tiers, be sure to stick around and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get even better at Ultimate, check out ProGuides.com.